TGIF. Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to Weather for Weather Geeks. We have no shortage of things to talk about tonight, with potential for a sloppy, wintry mix coming our way early next week after a pretty cold weekend. And, of course, this evening we have some ongoing snow shower and flurry activity. Let's start out on this Friday evening with a couple of uh, time lapses. This is from Niles today. And the overall flavor of the day, clouds, cold temperatures. And occasionally we've had some flurries that have come through, and even a heavier snow shower has occurred here and there throughout the uh, day today. Now at the airport, as of the climate report, at, uh, which is issued around 5.15, 5.20, we picked up 0.3 inches of snow uh, through, again, about 5.15 this afternoon, bringing our monthly total at the Youngstown Warren Airport to a relatively paltry 4.5 inches. Our high today was just after midnight, and temperatures have been falling for much of the afternoon. All right, uh, the lake is wide open for business. I've been talking about lately the, the lack of ice on the Great Lakes, including most importantly for us, Lake Erie. And so with the lake wide open for business and much colder air moving over the lake, those water temperatures are a few degrees above freezing. Um, that's enough of a difference. The, the most important level when it comes to lake effect is about 5,000 feet above our heads as far as the air temperature goes. So you want a big, to get big lake effect, you need a big temperature difference between the 5,000 foot level and the water temperature. It's a little less important what the air temperature is down here near the ground. Anyway, uh, this is a, a modest setup for lake effect. This isn't the coldest air mass in the world, but it's certainly cold enough. And we've seen these flurries and snow showers coming and going. Now, as of this recording, I've been keeping an eye on one band kind of uh, snaking through Trumbull County, but this has actually weakened a bit over the last 15, 20 minutes or so. What you see is what you get for the evening. Occasionally, a little burst of heavier snow may leave some candy coatings and some slick spots, maybe even up to an inch in a couple of spots, mainly north of Interstate 80. So yeah, it's turning colder. 26 here locally, but they're down in the teens as nearby as central Michigan, and that's what's coming our way overnight. Here's a look at the latest road sensor temperatures from ODOT across eastern Ohio, and uh, at least on the major roads, some of them are still above freezing. Some are getting pretty close to the freezing mark. This is a bad reading, of course, uh, and we've got a couple <laughs> reporting dry with no temperature. Uh, you can ignore those, but you get the idea. It, it's cooling off, and as the air temperatures and the ground temperatures continue to drop tonight, any of these snow showers and flurries could make things just a little bit slick on anything that's untreated. The most numerous snow showers and flurries will be over the next handful of hours. Once we get past midnight, I think uh, the lake effect machine will start to gradually wind down and shift a little more exclusively towards northwest PA and southwestern New York. Maybe some flurries will be left over through about daybreak here tomorrow morning. In fact, I can't rule out a stray flurry maybe up until 8 or 9 o'clock. Beyond that, I think as high pressure noses in from the west, clouds should gradually thin from west to east during the second half of Saturday, but any sunshine is going to be fairly ineffective. It'll be the coldest day of 2021 so far as far as the daytime high temperature with a forecasted high of just 24, and then the coldest night of the season, or of the uh, of the month, I should say, will be possible tomorrow night as we get down into the uh, mid-teens. We, we had a few colder nights back in December. All right, on Sunday, warm front heads our way, and clouds will thicken and lower. Pretty unproductive clouds, though. Maybe a couple of flurries, a stray sprinkle, nothing of much consequence during the second half of the day on Sunday. All right, let's focus on this system for early next week. Uh, this is a low-pressure system that is taking a somewhat favorable track for us to get uh, wintry precipitation. The problem is it's not taking the kind of track it looks like in which just snow will occur around here. I think it's going to come far enough north that enough warm air will get dragged in, especially aloft, that we'll see some kind of a wintry mix. Not first thing Monday morning, but towards dinner time and into Monday night and even into parts of Tuesday. So again, recapping the weekend, 24 tomorrow, 30 on Sunday, nothing of much consequence this weekend. So because of the threat of a wintry mix, Monday late into Monday night into Tuesday, I think the potential for plowable snow, impactful snow around here is quite a bit lower than for our friends to the west and also to the east. The uh, mountainous terrain of central PA will kind of cause some cold air damming and, and keep that cold air in place long enough that uh, probably a fair amount of snow will fall in places like State College, Williamsport, Bradford, up towards Jamestown, New York, Altoona, PA, maybe even as far south as, as Harrisburg, PA, down east of the mountains primarily. And then to our west, uh, they're in the cold air from the ground all the way up in Fort Wayne, in Toledo probably, and out towards Chicago as well. So I-90, I-80, the Ohio Turnpike, especially once you're into northwest Ohio, 
can be problematic, I think, Monday into Monday night. Now, here's a look at our model spread as far as just snow here locally. The uh, Euro has an inch. The GFS has basically nada on its latest run, with a lot of mixed precipitation as well. So, you know, this map shows the, the chances of six inches or more worth of snow. Highest odds, again, Fort Wayne, Chicago, maybe as far east as Toledo. And around here, I'm not going to rule it out, but uh, it's really small. I mean, it's basically a 0% chance once you're down towards East Liverpool. Uh, but in most of our TV viewing area, I don't want to rule it out. It's only Friday. Um, but at this point, it seems pretty unlikely to me that we'll get anything more than a couple of sloppy inches of snow out of this. Now, when we talk about mixed precipitation, this may take on various forms. At some points, it may be raining. At some points, we may have sleet. Occasionally, if we have rain with temperatures below freezing, of course, that's freezing rain. And I think at least initially, as this precipitation comes in on Monday, it may come in as a brief period of snow. The chances of ice accretion being problematic are also fairly low. I don't want to rule it out just yet. Here's a look at one model simulation showing, yeah, there can be maybe some light accretion of freezing rain if if the temperatures stay below 32 for long enough, late Monday, Monday night, Tuesday morning. Um, but at this point, I, I don't think it's it's a huge deal for us. A couple of different models here showing the forecast ice accretion. Generally speaking, problems with ice accretion begin at, a boi uh, at about a quarter of an inch or more. You can have some... Uh, you know, isolated issues with a tenth of an inch on especially colder surfaces, bridges, overpasses, maybe your deck. Um, right now, the GFS, the red line, shows about a tenth of an inch. The Euro has a fair amount less. So there's a lot to sort out still with this Monday into Tuesday system. Odds do not favor a big snowstorm. Odds do not favor a big ice storm. What odds do favor is just a miserable, sloppy mix back and forth between precipitation types. And at times it may be raining in 34 degrees, which for my money, is about the worst weather that we can have. All right, let's talk about some good news in the longer range before we go tonight. And I've been talking about this frequently lately, that the pattern as we flip the calendar into February does not look that cold at all. February is likely to come out in the wash as another warmer than average month. And certainly the beginning of February, the first week of February, is, you know, we have pretty high confidence in this. This is going to be a mild period. We could be dealing with several days with highs at least in the 40s in early February. And, you know, early February, our average high is still 33, 34 degrees. So we might be looking at some plus 10s occasionally uh, as far as the difference from average in the high temperature department early in the month around Groundhog Day. So that's something to look forward to unless you are hoping for snow and cold. That'll do it for me tonight on this Friday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks with this system coming our way Monday into Tuesday. I'll stay plugged into the weather this weekend. I'll probably cut a video or two from home. Make sure you're following Chris Sarnelli and Tyler Ryan. They are our weekend warriors, and they'll have updates on 21 News in the morning and again at 6 and 11 in the evening. I'll see you back here on Monday.